Welcome. This Heaven For Sure video provides spiritual insights for life that are designed to bring you peace and rest and, yes, eternal life. In recent months, it's been said so often, it takes a major disruption in our lives to reorder our priorities in life. You know, when the Lord Jesus was here on earth, a young man came running as fast as he could and bowed at his feet. The story is recorded in the Bible three times. The story opens this way in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, and verse 17, and I quote, As Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, a man came running up to him, knelt down, and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, we don't know what circumstances in his life were so impactful that caused him to think beyond the daily things of life. What was it that caused him to start thinking about eternal life? It's pretty obvious this young man had an epiphany of sorts. Maybe a better word would be an awakening. Among the details of the story, we are told that he was wealthy. So up until this point in his life, he probably felt very comfortable and secure. What interrupted his life that caused him so much insecurity and anxiety, so much so that he literally bolted down the dusty road, running after Jesus? Be sure of this. When you have thoughts of God or eternity, it's not a mere coincidence. It is significant. God is reaching out to you. He has his ways of whispering into your soul. He really, really does want to get your attention. You know those big questions, who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? Is there a God? Is there life after death? Those are the very questions God wants you to think about today. This man started running. Very few adults, especially wealthy ones, allow themselves to look anxious and worried. This man didn't care what his neighbors thought. He literally ran and he bowed in the dust. It seems he suddenly realized he had failed big time in preparing for eternity. Are you all prepared? Kneeling in the dust that day at the feet of Jesus, he seemed so vulnerable. Let me repeat that opening verse, Mark chapter 10, verse 17. As Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, a man came running up to him, knelt down, and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? That's Mark 10, verse 17. Perhaps you have been checking off the boxes in your life. Education, career, vehicle, home, family, friends, but you can't check off eternal life yet. You are just like the rich young man. Now, to his credit, he ran to the right person, Jesus Christ, who is himself eternal life. That's what the Bible says. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, verse 12, God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has a son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. End quote. It's obvious this man had many right thoughts, but one was deadly wrong. For instance, his thoughts about urgency were correct. Eternal life is worth running for. His thinking about Jesus having the answer was correct. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's John 14, verse 6. Knowing that he needed eternal life was correct thinking, because without it, one faces eternal death and separation from God. But did you notice what his one fatally flawed thought was? Again, his question was, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? His wrong thought was that he had to do or earn, or work for eternal life. No doubt he worked hard for everything else he got in life, but that is not how one obtains eternal life. 
We don't earn it or get it as a reward for effort. The Bible repeatedly makes it clear eternal life is a gift that must be accepted. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 says this, This is a record that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If the gift is for you, but you never accept it, and you fail or neglect it to claim it as yours, you will never possess it, and you will never, ever have eternal life. But before I finish, I want you to think about this man's blind spot. He wasn't quite as serious about eternal life as he initially appeared to be. And the all-knowing Christ exposed his blind spot. It seemed he desperately wanted eternal life, but his blind spot was he loved something much more. Sometimes we aren't even aware of what is in our own hearts or why we seem like we are hitting a brick wall each time we try to think about spiritual things. The Bible will help you see your blind spot. There is a Bible verse that goes like this, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, for the word of God, that's the Bible, is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires, end quote. If you're thinking along these lines lately, we encourage you to read the Bible for yourself. And if you don't know where to start, many people find reading the Gospel of John in particular very enlightening to their souls. Give it a try. I guarantee you, if you approach the Bible honestly, your blind spot will become very clear to you. That story continues. The Bible says, Jesus, looking at him, loved him. There's not one sinner he does not love and desire to save, including you. Yes, he has eyes of compassion, but he also has all-seeing eyes. He can see in your heart what you may fail to see yourself. And as they talked together on the road that day, it became obvious the young man ranked his possessions, and his lifestyle as the true love of his heart. For him, eternal life would just be like the icing on the cake, not much different than checking off one more box in life. Friend, eternal life is of a different magnitude than everything else in your life. It's more than checking off another box. That would be like comparing a a, a turtle to a tower. But eternal matters are of a different order altogether. Let me ask you, why do you want eternal life? I'm going to read a couple of statements just to test your thinking. Some say they want eternal life, but the seriousness of the matter hasn't really gripped their heart. The reality is Christ will never be yours until this becomes the only priority in your life. Some say, I want to keep everything in my life the way it is now and just add eternal life to it. Others think, I want to spend eternity with Christ, but I can't imagine following Christ the rest of my life. In other words, I want a changed destiny, but not a changed life. Such thoughts are what cause people to lose their souls. Now Jesus invited this rich young man to come and to follow him, just like he is inviting you. Here's a beautiful verse of invitation that I want to leave with you as this video ends. It's in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11 and verse 28. Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary 
and burdened, and I will give you rest. The young man carefully weighed it all up on the road that day, but in the final analysis, he was not willing to make a complete sellout to Christ. Yes, he bowed his knees on the road, but he was not willing to bow his heart and surrender to Christ Jesus the Lord. He turned down the greatest of all invitations, and the Bible ends that story. He was saddened, and he went away grieving, for he was one who owned much property. Yes, Jesus loved him. The loving eyes of the Savior will haunt him for all eternity. Have you discovered the one thing missing in your life is eternal life? Are you willing to deal with your blind spot? I'm going to leave you with two questions. Would you like to have eternal life right now? Christ is available right now. And the second one is, what is stopping you from embracing Jesus Christ as your Savior right now? If you'd like us to pray for you or your loved ones, or if you would like further help from the Bible, or if you'd like to receive more Bible information free of charge in the mail, or if you have responded to the invitation from Christ to come for rest, please let us know by contacting us through www.heavenforsure.com.